Hello everyone, welcome to Paper and Moose and welcome to a mail day. Grab a cup of coffee, make some tea, get a nice little baked good, and settle down for some mail. Thank you so much for joining me on mail day. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Mail day is a day where I open up packages sent from all over the globe from viewers such as yourself. I'm always amazed, shocked, astonished by what you all send me. And I also am humbled by the kindness that you show me uh, through the treasure packages in the mail. We are almost in April. So that means that my flea market, the Tote Man flea market will be opening up and I should be able to resume my um, two videos no video, two videos, no video. I've been doing a video every other day and hopefully with the spring coming around, I'll be able to have more videos, more flea markets, rummage sales, estate sales, and auctions. Auctions have been pretty slim, slim to none, none, none over the last few, probably at least over a month it's been since I've been to an auction, I think. So those should start to pick up, rummage sales start happening, and then as long as the weather cooperates, the flea market will start gearing up and then be in full effect by the time summer comes around. So more videos will be on the way, history behind the paper, and then an update on my letters from Berlin as well. I'm still searching. I'm still searching whether or not we will find the Pumal, the Gerda. I'm still working on it. <laughs> So let's get to the mail. We have three packages today, uh, two smaller ones and one larger one. So let's start off with the little guys. This is from uh, Lois out in Pickering, Ontario, Canada. Hello, Lois. Let's see, is there a little card? There is. Hi, Renee. Oh, I gotta take my glasses off. This is <laughs> a little package with a little print. Uh, I made the card by cutting out the card, put a piece of plastic wrap in between the napkin and ironed it on a no steam setting. Uh, the napkin adheres to the card. Oh, interesting. You can make wooden, uh, you can make Christmas wooden ornaments with the stickers I sent you by randomly gluing stickers on the ornaments in a collage. Oh no, I broke my elbow three years ago and it's never been the same. Oof. It is difficult to do the crafts now, but anyway, enjoy them. And if I see anything else, I'll send it to you. Well, thank you so much. It's funny that you mentioned napkins. I had someone comment that in crafters, you can tell me if it's true or not. They said that crafters will pay like a dollar per napkin. Does that mean even on new napkins, like a plain blue napkin, crafters pay a dollar for? I can't, I, I personally can't see that when if it's a newer napkin that's just plain, you can go to your local store and get a whole package for, I don't know, maybe $5 max. So let me know you crafters out there. I know for vintage napkins it's different, but for older napkins, oh, well, this is nuts. Okay, so yes, napkins. So this here is a napkin. You never, I never would have guessed it feels completely different than what a usual napkin would feel like. Renee, I sent you some vintage Christmas uh, type stickers. Merry Christmas, Lois. Well, thank you. That's really, I'm, yeah, like you would never, you would never know. How interesting. Alrighty. Let's see. We have a whole little assortment. Ooh, these are great for all your crafting needs we have little tickets we have some flowers and say the gardens in london don't want to lose these guys over here this is a fake you know a, a reproduction uh business card for a salon we have some sheet music so it's just printed on regular paper, but it has that great old look to it. We have maps. Looks like they have the pyramids on there. With more, oh, these are really interesting. So they're 
almost see-through. That's a mushroom. I'm gonna say translucent. We have some more lilacs, which, oh, the smell of lilacs, are, it's so good. It's so, I think, refreshing and spring-like, the smell of lilacs, which I think I have a lilac candle that we got from the one house. Louis Vuitton. These are really neat. And we even have a pine cone. And just a few more. There's some other little paper pieces. Oh, this has a train. This is very steampunk. Time machine, train. And then this one has a bird in front of a ledger. These are also great ideas in how to use your ephemera and your older paper uh, by taking kind of uh, going off of what they, they've they made. So, really interesting little collection of paper. Thanks so much again, and hopefully your elbow lets you do a little bit of crafting every now and then. The next little package we have is from our friend Uva out in Germany. They tried their best to help me locate, attempt to locate our letters from Berlin Pumo, but to no avail, but I will be sending you an email with a short listing of some phrases in the letters that you might be able to help me correctly translate because they just, it doesn't, it, it's probably, you know, a certain phrase that was said in Germany or a different type of, you know, lingo slang that when translated, it doesn't make sense. So. I'll be sending that out to you probably within the next like week to week and a half with Easter and family coming in. You have all the, the family things, the ham, the pineapple stuffing, my favorite. <laughs> it's mostly, it's a dessert. It's like bread with pineapple. I can't, it just, it's, it's great, it's great. Anyway, so let's see what they have sent. I think I kind of know. <laughs> Ooh. Postcards. Now, not just any postcards, mind you. Now, usually there is a letter. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Let's see. I have a lot to research from Uva. So many great things. And more of these. These are from 1922. All right. Let's get to the. Let's get to the letter. <clears throat> Dearest Renee, hope everything is all right in Bloomsbury. As promised, I enclosed today the rest of the Walter correspondence, yes, uh, from different locations in the U.S. Um, to going to pronounce that wrong, it's a town near Berlin. Um, his name was Walter, I think it's Schoenig, and I assume that he was the son of a wealthy family uh, traveling through America in 1906 and 1907. Also a number of other postcards sent from America to Europe and also some cards from the early 20th century, which I'm assuming we're talking about the um, Fennings. It's, it's really hard to believe when you look at these and when you hold them that they're from 1922 because it almost feels like you could go to like a craft store and get a little packet of these because the the paper is so well made and they feel so good and I mean it's it looks like they were just printed yesterday honestly let's see I enclosed a pile of business covers from the 1890s mostly sent from New York City to a Mr. Hoffman in Newark New Jersey probably a businessman during that time I saw those in there um, also um, some correspondence from early 19th century, it looks like it says. Yes, they're from the 1800s. A letter from Paris to Italy. Letter from um, Austria to Vienna. A letter from Nuremberg uh, to Bavaria. Oh, wow. And then around 1840, there's a letter um, from Poland to Berlin. Does that letter have any any thoughts about Pumal in there? No. Um, the sender may have been, uh, might have been a member of the upper class. 
because he used premium paper, a super fine paper from England and also sealed, um, it says, I think it's in Lito, Lito um, for a quick delivery. And the blue three means the amount of postage. And that's it for today. Hope you enjoy these items. And as one of the Christmas postcards says, fair be all thy hope and prosperous thy life. I like that for you. Oh my goodness. And they're sending another package. <laughs> uh, so much to research. Oh my goodness. Where to start? Where to start? So these are the letters from the 1800s. Here's the one stamped Nuremberg. I don't know if you can see that stamp right up there. Probably not. So delicate. I need to invest. I mean, I have good magnifying glasses, but just the, you think of them writing with the pens that they had and how they wrote. Just beautiful handwriting that we have lost today. I don't want to ruin those too much. We'll save those. Here we have some of the postcards. But just imagine the trip from Europe to America and then you're traveling through America during the early 1900s. And just how different that same trip would look today. We have a photo postcard. Yes, I need my good light and my magnifying glass. Oh, Patterson, New Jersey. Regards from Walter Coves. Please reply. Oh, an Admiral in Amsterdam. Liebe Mutter. Airmail saves time. Wow. So many. Then here are the business um, envelopes. I don't think businesses do this today. The only businesses sometimes that uh, send out mail are like, the ones you don't want mail from. <laughs> the New York Brass Company. Fish and provisions. Oh, this one is great. Boyd's porcelain lined caps. It's a lovely blue color. These are so nice. You can make shirts out of these. We have a Rochester Lamp Company. Let me find another. American Belgian Lamp Company. And then another really fun one from Rochester Lamp Company. The Rochester and 2,000 Varieties, the largest lamp store in the world. Are they still in business? Something to look up. Yosemite Valley. Don't think those people would be able to stand on there today. So yes, these are from Walter. <clears throat> Liba Altern, dear parents. Well, at least his handwriting is, the, the, the handwriting on here is still legible. Oftentimes with the postcards, it becomes like smeared, but these still look like they're pretty good. We'll have to do some translating on these. Oh, he went on the the Southern Pacific Railroad, um, then off to Yosemite Valley in Frisco. I'm assuming San Francisco. Hey, 
maybe now since I upgraded my, I bet you, I bet you I can. Since with the upgrade of my Ancestry uh, subscription so that I could try and locate Pumo, I, Walter, we're coming for you next. <laughs> uh, we're coming for you next, Walter. So yeah, it's just all really nice handwriting, still very legible. So these should be rather easy to translate. And then we can take a look at Walter's journey through America and then hopefully find some other things about him as well. And then we also have just another assortment of postcards that Uva sent. Christmas greetings here. Fair be all thy hopes and prosperous thy life. That's a great, a great sentiment to share with someone. 1908. These are all in covers and they look really nice. Kept in great shape for all of us, from all of us to all of you, a joyous Christmas. Christmas. This is the St. Gabriel mission. Dearest cousins, just a line to say it has been a long time since we heard from you. Hope, hope you are all there. Oh boy. Um, Christmas time makes us think of our old friends. So hopefully um, we may go east next summer. If we do, hope to see you. We are all in our usual health. Dear brother, got home okay at 7 p.m. and trust you did also. See now, we would never send a card like that. You know, if you were traveling and you got home, you wouldn't be like, oh, let me send out a postcard to let them know I got home at seven o'clock. What do we do now? We send a text send a call so this was like a text message back then but in paper form well more great things to research more people to discover more uh, adventures through paper so thank you so much Uva and I'm very to see what you have sent next I, I've I've heard what it is it's another um, uh, it's an album with photographs but a person is named and i can't wait so looking forward to that looking forward to more research and seeing what we can uncover from the past thank you again so much last but not least we have this big guy from tom out in springfield ohio so let's see what tom has written Hi Renee, first I want to say how much I enjoy your channel. Well, thank you so much. I'm doing some early spring cleaning. I've been trying to do some spring cleaning too. I've been going through my clothes and seeing what I haven't worn for several years and uh, donating that and just trying to just do, you know, clean where you haven't cleaned, like underneath the stove. <laughs> um, so I'm doing some early spring cleaning and these items are part of what needs to go. I thought you may enjoy them. Take care and don't change a single thing about your channel. Well, thank you so much for the kind words. I, I do always want to make improvements with my channel with editing, voiceovers, and content. But again, sometimes my brain gets the best of me because I think, well, I have to research all this in order to understand how all this different editing works and then it just becomes this full-fledged project that takes way too long and is probably unnecessary <laughs> i don't think i need like special crazy effects for a flea market video so i'm glad that you enjoy the videos as they are and I, I do try and make little improvements here and there but thanks for watching and it's good to know that even if I don't have glitz and glam in all my videos that you, you do enjoy them. A blue moose. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> the author's, oh, there's postcards on the back. The author's name is Manus Punk Pinkwater. That's a great name, Manus Pinkwater. It almost looks like Sweet Pickles. That's what it reminds me of, the Sweet Pickles book. The moose shines bright, the stars give a light, and you, you may kiss a porcupine at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> moose meeting, game warning. Oh my gosh, the moose is blue. Your wish will come true. 
Mr. Breton had a little restaurant on the edge of the big woods. There was nothing north of Mr. Breton's house except nothing <laughs> with trees in between. Oh, does a moose this? Oh my gosh, I think he, he meets a moose. And he cooks for him? Oh. Anything is possible when you have a moose in your book. Anything. We do have a postcard. Oh, they're, um, looks like military. Oops, there's no writing, nothing on the back, so. These men will probably be a mystery. All right, what do we have? What do we have? We have a New York and Company bags. That's a great way to reuse them. They feel like magazines. I don't know what this is, but it looks I'm excited. Compact shelving number two. Life volume seven, November to December, 1939. Oh my gosh, it is. This is a great way to store them all. Wow. Now normally I think you see like magazines and you're like, oh, they're neat. I think the fact that they're all compact in this, like it, it's more inviting to read, more inviting to look through. Oh wow. You have all the old ads, the news from that time. This is like something you'd go to the library and take out. I love it. So I'm guessing that's what this one is. It's probably the other, the other half. Yes, September to October, 1939. And then this one was November to December. So 1939, September 1939. What happened then leading us to World War II? There's Benito, September 11th, 1939. 20 years of peace, how Europe worked its way from the war to end war to the war of 1939, which may end Europe. Wow. This is great. I'd... Again, I think having them in this version all together just it makes you want to sit down and go page by page. Don't hibernate, insulate. Protect your car for the winter. Now, look at that great ad, the bear from Texaco. Well, Tom, this was a, a great surprise. Definitely wonderful to add to the collection. I mean, just the, the ads alone and all the different companies that no longer exist to see how they advertised, but also the history that is held in these pages and thinking of how many people would have gone to the this magazine to check out life, to see what was going on in life during that time and just setting up in 1939 for what was going to happen shortly after, so. Yes, look, these were in a library in uh, Springfield, Ohio. So I'm guessing probably they uh, deaccessioned this. They did not need it in their collection any longer. Most likely these were all put on microfiche or some kind of digital and they could get rid, quote unquote, of the paper. I'm glad that they, they saved these though and either you know someone saved them from the library from being thrown out or they had a sale and someone purchased it. 
or they just found little like and walked out in the library. <laughs> I don't know, but I have my own little library now of life magazines. Thank you so much, Tom. Uh, thank you to Tom, Lois, and Uva for all these wonderful items. So much history in paper, in little boxes and big boxes, and so much to discover and learn and read and understand. I just need some more time. <laughs> well, thank you all again. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting, for sharing out the channel. And I'm so glad that many of you do enjoy the videos and I hope that you continue to enjoy the videos that I make and go along with me on all these adventures. Until the next mail day or the next adventure, I hope that you have a great day. And I'll see you all next time for the next adventure here at Paper and Moose. Mm -hmm.